same today, yesterday, and forever. And you know what that title is? That title is God's plan has not changed. But we have. God's plan has not changed. But we have. And I want you to ponder on that, on the we have. Because we will look at ourselves and see, you know, even though we are doing some things that's good, but we want to do some things that is more excellent. And so we want to kind of analyze and judge ourselves and see some areas in which we can improve. Amen? God's plan is predicated on the supernatural. We got to get a revelation of that. It is predicated on the supernatural and we being a spirit being. See, we are really a spirit being. We have been called what? The Trinity. We have a soul. We have a spirit. And we live in a body. And so we are actually spirit beings because somebody paid the price for that fleshly part, the body, the man. The price has already been paid. And so the price was paid, but not only it was paid, amen, he came back and said, I'm not going to leave y'all comfortless. Now, that was a profound statement. Now, we know God cannot lie. So that means that he did not leave us comfortless. That means that he left us with what he said he left us with, and that is what he placed on the inside of you because you accepted God as your Savior. Amen. You did it. Not your neighbor, not your husband, not your wife, not your children. You did. And when you did that, he left you with the Spirit, his Spirit. And so we talked about on Sunday how God had a plan. And we talked about love. Let our value evolve. And so it began with God loving us. He loved us so much that he created us. And he allowed us to be evolved in the earth. But when he allowed us to be evolved, amen, and when he made man, he took his breath and breathed into man. Then we became a living soul with a spirit. And so God is saying, I have a plan, and my plan has not changed. So the question tonight, God is just saying, have we? And so we don't really have to beat ourselves up. Amen. Because God says uh, we all have sinned and we all have fallen short of the glory of God. So that means that the things that you have done, you don't have to beat yourself over the head about it. Just repent and move on. Learn from it. Don't stay there. See, this is what God is saying. I don't want you to stay there. I want you to repent. Acknowledge that you have done some things that you were shortcoming in your shortcomings in your decision-making, and go on. And that is what's happening in the church. We got people still concerned about things in the past. I said on Sunday, man, take your big old hand and put it in your face, and that represents your past. So tonight we're going to follow suit, and we're going to do it again because faith comes by hearing and hearing. Demonstration comes by demonstrating, demonstrating. Put your hand in front of your face. That represents your past. That's it. Now take it and put it behind your head. Do you see your past? No, you don't. And now you are walking around in your present. Glory to God. It has no effect on me. Oh, yes, it happened. But guess what? My past needed to happen sometimes because I learned from it. That's why I'm able not to walk in it now. 
Does that make sense? See, I'm not going to make the same mistakes I made then. Y'all follow me? And so that's what God is today. And so it was so profound when he was saying, oh, I made, you know, my creation. And I did it out of love and I allowed it to evolve. And I saw that it was not only good. <laughs> it was real good. And God looked at us and said, we are real good. And I submit to you today to start looking at yourself and see how good you are. A lot of us don't even really feel good about them ourselves. And we are basing it on the things and the situation that we may be in right now. But we, we're not talking about right now. But we are moving out on what God has said about us. What has God said about you? He said that you're fearfully and wonderfully made. But see, God is saying tonight, stop taking the word of God as just a message. God says, slap it upside your head. Put it in your heart and let it come out your mouth. So you speak those things into existence. What did God do? When he wanted to create the earth, what did he spoke it into existence? The earth was without void. And it was dark, gross darkness. And God spoke to the darkness. God is saying to us today, your issues in your life are darkness. And God is saying, speak to it. When he spoke to the darkness, it became light. Your situation will become light. But you can't be mums the word. You got to speak. He says, speak those things that's not as though they were. Even though they have not evolved at this moment, you speak it. Because once you speak it, it has to move. And so we are not taking this word to the point where I got to be defeated about nothing. Everything that's going on in our life is just a process. And God wants us to understand that that's just, just what it is. See, my plan could not materialize in one day in your life. It takes a lifetime. I have to teach you some things. You have to go through some things. You have to make some decisions. And the decisions that you make are not always going to be effective. But you need to make that decision to see what is the best decision to make the next time. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? But see, we have a tendency when we make a bad decision, we can't come back from it. We are still living it for years upon years, months upon months, things that happened to me five years ago. Man, my God, what happened to me five years ago better leave me alone. It don't have nothing in me. It don't even look like me. It don't even act like me because the way I act five years ago, I was defeated. I was always looking up from a position of being down. God said, no, I'm not looking from a position of being down anymore. I'm in a position where I'm looking down on situations that are under my feet. Church situations are under your feet. For you have the power and it's in the name of Jesus. And it's really in the name of the Lord. Though Satan rages, he shall not defeat you. But we need him to rage. We need him to come against us, and I believe that the church don't understand that. Every time we're going through something, we're ready to run. We're ready to quit. We're ready to give up. We're ready to get, get out of it. I got to escape. Why are you trying to escape? Stay in the fire, glory to God. Diamonds don't come from running up out of the fire. It has to go through the rough, and it has to be burned. You have to burn all them rough edges off. It has to burn off all that dirt, all that disbelief, all that misunderstanding, 
all the hurt. It has to be burnt off to come out as pure gold. God said, give it a chance. He said, give it a chance. We're not giving him a chance. God said, we got to give him a chance. He had Jeremiah to speak to the people. He made a covenant with the people in Jeremiah chapter 1. We're going to read that in verse 1, verse verse 1, verse 1. It says, the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, hear the words of this covenant. How many know God has made a covenant with us? Amen. Same covenant he made with the children of Israel. He made a covenant with us. See, a covenant should not be easily broken. Even if you are married, glory to God, and you're in a relationship. But when you are married, one of the things we say to them, you know, when we give you that ring, when you present that ring, it's a three-ring cord, and it's not so easily broken, glory to God. Now, the only reason that it's not easily broken is that it has three qualities. It has you, your mate, But God has to be in the center. And that has been the catalyst. We are overlooking who made us, who create us, who is developing us, who loves us, who care for us, who would never leave us, would never forsake us. We forget all about him. And we take over the relationship. Oh, now we know everything. You just a little old kid just off the block. What it is it that you know? How you going to know how to be in a marriage and you just got married? You don't know nothing about no marriage. You don't even know nothing about that one you married. So how you going to run some things? You can't run nothing. You need to sit somewhere and listen. Submit. God said that's what's happening. To my people, nobody wants to submit. See, we learn something right away, and then we want to run with it. You don't know enough, though. You don't run. You don't know enough. And so you running around here, think you got it all going on, and somebody can come smack you upside the head. You hitting the ground somewhere because you don't have a solid foundation. You know, even in relationship, you got to know that y'all are different, right? You don't, you don't know that, do you? Y'all think just because y'all love each other, y'all the same, but you got another thing coming. Y'all ain't nowhere near the same. I need to learn who you are. And it ain't going to come overnight. It's going to come from some disappointments. But you got to be willing to take the disappointments because that's God's plan. See, that is his plan that you have some disappointments. Because if you don't have no disappointment, you will never learn nothing. See, if you don't go through some things, you won't be nothing. See, we fall down, but we do what? Get up. But there's no need to get up if you never fell down. So, yeah, Jeremiah, to speak to him, said, listen, hear my words. (laughs) Hear the words of this covenant And speak to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. He said, and say to them, thus says the Lord of God of Israel. Cursed is the man who does not obey the words of this covenant. See, God didn't play games, but he he wasn't playing. He said, cursed is the man who does not obey this command, this covenant. He said, which I command your fathers in the day I brought them out of the land of Egypt. So there's not nothing new. He's not picking on you. He made the same covenant with our forefathers that he's making with us. He says, which I commanded your forefathers in the day I brought them out of the land of Egypt. See, when we read that, you know, when he brought them out of the land of Egypt, God's trying to bring you out of a land. It ain't called Egypt. But he's trying to bring you out of all those situations that you don't got yourself stuck in. That you can't forgive. That you can't forget. And you find yourself stuck. And you can't come out. Oh, let me read that again then. (laughs) He said, which I commanded your fathers in the day I brought them out. 
of the land of Egypt. Church, y'all still in the land of Egypt in some areas. You fill in the blanks. See, because I don't have to fill in the blank for you because I don't know that much about you. But you do know yourself. And God knows we got to work out it on ourselves. We got to work it out ourselves. Your wife can't work it out. Your husband can't work it out. Your mama, your daddy, your hog, your dogs, the cats. They can't work it out for you. You got to work it out for yourself. See, some people are so submitted to their dog. Y'all laughing, but some people submit more to their dog than they submit to their husband. They'll take care of their dog more. They, how do, why do you see it's such a big market now? You see pet, pet buildings all over the place. There's more pet buildings now than it is any building. They got clothes now. They got resorts now. People leaving them millions of dollars when they won't leave their kids nothing. Oh, now y'all laughing about a pet. You better leave that dog alone. You better not mess with my dog. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. He said, listen, listen, listen. He said, obey my voice. He said, obey my voice and do according to all that I command you. So shall you be my people. All he just wants you to obey him, man. He said, then you're going to be my people. He's trying to be harsh, right? He ain't going nowhere. <laughs> he ain't going nowhere. Think about it. Think about the word. If you never leave, you know, for say, you can't go nowhere. So what he's just talking about now when he said, you're going to be my people. As though if you do this, you won't be my people. Yes, you'll be his people, but you won't be all happy. You're going to be going through some things. You're going to be miserable. Life is seem like it's going to be hard. Life is going to seem like you can't overcome. Yes, you can overcome, though. You follow what I'm saying? He says, and I will be your God. See, there you go. Now, he said, I ain't going nowhere now. I'm going to go be your God. Church, get that in your spirit, man. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what you're battling. You still have a God that loves you. And when nobody else loves you, God loves you. I don't care how bad you think you are. I don't care how people have labeled you and you believed it. Some of us live in a lie. Some of us living from what somebody said about us. But don't you don't understand that they don't have a heaven or hell to put you in. So you don't have to receive nothing from somebody that's trying to tell you something other than who you really are. So when they are telling you something that don't define you, amen, you renounce it. You reject it. And you don't always have to say it to them. Keep the peace in your heart. Because you don't want to start friction. You're not affecting me. In my heart, I'm saying this to myself. Talk to yourself so you don't get out of character. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? Then they'll begin to see you and they see your mannerism and how what I said didn't affect you. How many know people say things and they're waiting on an expression? They're waiting for you to come back with something because they want to control the narrative. If I can get you to get out of character, I'm in control. I mean, I know a lot of people are always trying to be in control. I always want control. And so when they come up with what they're saying, they're trying to get in control. But you don't let them get a foothold <laughs> to be in control. Because I'm going to let you see that I'm not even affected by what you're saying. James said, be quick to listen and slow to and the reason he said that was when somebody say something out of character to you, guess who it is? Who's in control of what they said? It's the devil. So the devil jumps out and try to control the narrative. So James said, let me educate y'all a little bit. I want you to identify him. 
okay? Because great is he that's on the inside of you than he that's in the world. So I, I have no doubt that you can identify that that's not God. So when he comes and he say things, when they say things, God said, be quick to listen. So listen to what they are saying to you. I didn't say hear what they said. Because when you hear what they say, you have a tendency to bounce back. And you lash back. Oh, they don't know I put my pants on. Oh, they don't know who I am. They can't hold. You know what I'm saying? But when they listen, he said be quick to listen. See, be quick to listen. You're listening for the spirit man. You're listening for the spirit man. And so when the devil is doing all that talking, God just laughing. He ain't even paying no attention. He just let him do the talking. See, but he don't want him to shut up because he want him to reveal himself. See, if you shut the devil up, he won't reveal himself. But you need him to tell the whole story. You need him to tell the whole narrative about what he's trying to do to you and the decision that he wants you to make. So you let him keep talking. Don't you shut him up. Let him talk. James said, be quick to listen, but you be slow to speak. And you be slow to speak because you're listening to the Father. And he'll tell you when to speak after you get the whole story. Have you ever noticed a wise man? They're listening to a conversation. And they'll sit there and they don't say anything. You can see people in conversations a lot of times in a group. And they're talking. But you see some that just are listening and ain't trying to interject. Ain't trying to show they did smart, how intelligent they are. They just sit back. And they listen because they have wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. God said in all you're getting, you get an understanding that you don't have to step out and say something all the time. You don't always have to be the center of attention. You don't have to always try to tell somebody you're smart. If you know you're smart, stay smart. Then you ain't got to tell me. I don't care whether you're smart or not unless you're going to benefit me. You're going to give me something because you're so smart. If you ain't giving me nothing, I don't care whether you're smart or not. See, that's the nature. That's that sin nature. God said, be quick to listen and slow to speak. And so that intelligent person that's using the wisdom, have you noticed when you were growing up, when they finally say something, it's always everybody beginning to listen. When E.F. Hutton speaks, everybody listen. Because it seems like he always say something that really means something. Don't talk all the time. It's just listening. Because you learn a lot when you listen. I learned what I need to say to you. You know, I got to use a little wisdom because if you're a little bigger than I am, you know, I mess around and say the wrong thing, man. You might like, bam. <laughs> I can't have that. <laughs> See, that's the wisdom of having knowledge and having the spirit of Christ. In your life, God knew everything. And God said, I gave you spirit. Watch this. I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. Jeremiah 29, 11. As you go on, he says, for I know the plans I have for you. Believe that, church. Believe that he have a plan for you. If you believe that, you won't deviate away from it. You won't be sad in the process. You don't feel defeated in the process. I don't have as much as I had before, but I ain't mad about it. You, you hear what I'm saying? Because I'm like what Paul said, I mm, do what? Press. And I press <laughs> toward the high calling of God. God said you may not get up there, but long as you keep pressing, but you're going to keep getting blessed. <laughs> That's the 30, the 60, the 100 fold. You're still moving. You may not get 100, but I'll take 85 any day. I can live good off 85 million. <laughs> oh, 
don't you think you can live good off 85 million? Why you need 100 million? Some people go crazy and freak all out trying to make 100 million. They ain't number 15 million dollars. What's up with you? You see people, you see people. I know people be in the military, man. I'm a retired soldier, you know. 22 years. 22 and a half. And man, I had wisdom. I said, man, I, you know, retirement ain't but 20 years. <laughs> I'm up out of here. <laughs> I'm gone. Oh, man, I'm going to try to make 24. I'm going to try to make 26. I'm going to try to make 30. Why you try to do all that? <laughs> Just go and get your retirement and go on about your business. And start living life. I can tell you some horror stories. If you already got out at 20, you'll probably have your legs. This is the truth. I've known some people that jumped out of those planes. And right at retirement, they could have retired two years ago. They kept pushing to try to get more money, and they kept jumping out of the plane. I ain't trying to talk about nobody, but I'm just telling you what happened. Jumped out of the plane, trying the plane, and the, and, the, and the parachute, the wind took them right into a tree. And I was like, man, what is that big old scar behind you going all down your back? That wind took me right in that tree and messed up my spine. So now... You got some issues for the rest of your life because you try to get a dollar, some extra dollar. But what's the difference between 20 and 22? Ain't no difference. Oh, man, I might get, you know, uh, 1,500. Well, I'm getting 13, <laughs> and I'm happy about it. What is $200? What? Man, you go to, to get a steak dinner, two of you, y'all go spend $200. <laughs> you done messed your whole body up talking about $200 a year. See, that is something how the enemy, you know, kind of reveal that crazy stuff to people. Man, take the money and run. Go on about your business. Enjoy life. Go on and retire so you can be going on vacations and cruises and stuff like that. You spending all your time working, man. And then when, oh, I think I'm going to go on a cruise. Well, you done got a little too old and too much going on with your body. And you, and you like, hey, how you doing? <laughs> And you got all this money in the back. How you doing? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. You better, you better use some wisdom up in here. You need to get up out of there while you're doing good, man. Why you looking good? Why did somebody tell you all to be in Hollywood? <laughs> you know what I say? I'm gone, man. I'm gonna do it while I'm having fun. I'm telling you, church, I'm giving y'all some advice. Stop doing all. Stop doing all that working now. I'm telling you, it ain't always that good. You just got to be happy with what you got. And so God said, I got, I have a plan for you. Plan to prosper you. People think it's money, but prosper is you having a good time. You have peace in your life. You know what I'm saying? Go on, buy you a house, man. If you can't get the big old house that you think you won't, get your house. Just get one. Just get one. You know, God said he shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory, right? People don't understand that scripture. Because if you don't have a need, he can't get you another house. See, if you don't get one house, I can't get you another. Oh, my God. If you don't have one house, I can't get you a better one. See, as long as you're waiting on trying to get the best, you ain't got nothing. So I ain't got nothing to even supply you with. I don't even know what you like. <laughs> Glory to God. What is this, the scripture? The New Life Version. You're going to have to read it to me. I'm going to give you the mic because you know I can't see that, but that's all right. Yeah, read that. Glory to God. woo we, Man, I'm telling you. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. And this is the prosper you were talking about. You know, he said, I have plans for you to prosper. And the New Life Version said, plans for well-being and not for trouble. Woo. To give you a future and a hope. You see what I'm saying? He the one trying to give you a future. You trying to plan out a future for yourself. 
See, we just won't trust God. See, church, I'm telling you, it ain't into coming trying to please the pastors. It ain't in trying to come to Bible study and check your number off. I'm diligent. I come to church and all. It ain't about all of that. It's about your relationship with God. Jesus will work it out if you let. <laughs> work it out. Jesus going to work it out. Work it out. Now listen. Mama got a what, brand new pair of shoes or something. <laughs> I don't know what they say. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Somebody got a new pair of shoes. Amen. <laughs> and a paycheck. I guess that's good news. They did a second verse. Lord, ain't that good news. You know all the most songs, man. Amen. Whatever you need to make you happy. Now, so look is, at this. This is the message when also. I'm yeah, read that. I like the message home. Bible. Now, the message is really this good. This is God's word on the subject. As soon as Babylon's 70 years are up and not a day before, I'll show up and take care of you as I promised. Wait a minute. Stop and right there. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Church, I want y'all to really get that. He said, I will show up. And just take care of you. And take care of you. As I promised. As I promised. Don't be worried about somebody else taking care of you. Don't worry about nobody else taking care of you now. If you know that God going to take care of you, he promised to do it. He he's going to take care of the one that you want to take care of you. So he'll take care of that joker. Yeah. You, you hear what I'm saying? He'll take care of him yeah. too. Say so, sir. <laughs> Hallelujah. Y'all hear what I'm saying? When he said he take care of that joker. <laughs> he said, I'm going to take care of him to take care of you. But it's all based on how you have your trust in God. That's what it is. It ain't you. And it ain't your significant other neither. Read on. Read on. Then he said, and bring you back home. He said, I know what I'm doing. Wait a minute. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you got to know you don't know what you're doing. Hallelujah. Now, I'm serious. You really don't know what you're doing. Because if you knew what you're doing, you wouldn't be sad. You wouldn't be disappointed about things. You got to know it's a better day. And if you, can't, if you don't believe it's a better day, I mean, you don't know what God getting ready to do for you. You don't know what he said he's going to do that he's going to do it. You really don't. See, you're not a Sadducee, so you shouldn't be sad. Man, when I didn't have nothing, I just ate syrup sandwiches. Didn't have nothing to eat. I put some syrup on some bread and I tore it up. If I wanted some candy, I just pour the syrup in the pan and fry it and it'd become hard candy. Put some water in it. Put a little water in it. Y'all don't know nothing about that stuff. See, when you're going through something, you have to make the best of what you're going through. And God is saying, I'm watching you. I'm seeing how you carry yourself because I have a plan for you. Because, see, that's what happened to those people, man. In the Old Testament, they didn't have all these luxuries that we had. They had to put their trust in God. We went to Africa on a crusade. We really saw God reveal to us how it really is that, that you don't have all these amenities ready accessible to you. And you got to believe in God. If you don't believe in God, if you don't trust in God, if you don't wait on God, you ain't going to have nothing. And that's the only thing you have is your hope God. and your trust that God says what he's going to do, he will do yeah. for you. And that's why you see a lot of people that have come from those third world countries. They're so appreciative. So appreciative yeah. and have those personalities. Don't get yeah. down on them. Yeah. You got to see where they came from. If you saw where they came from, if you might. God, have you ever been to one of the third world countries? Man, they got nothing. They got nothing. We had them running up to the truck, amen, trying to sell us goods and things like that. Had clothes on like they've been having the clothes on all year long. The same all thing. Their their the same thing. Yeah. They were shorts. They used to be white. But they're not white. 
Had a T-shirt been stretched so long, glory to God, it was a medium, now it's an extra large. Been worn so much. And when we rode up on that road, man, we almost got our life taken away from us because of it. We didn't understand the culture. How to understand the culture. When you go to places, learn the culture, read a little bit about it so you'll know how to act so you don't get knocked off. But when we roll up there and they come up to the one of the sellers, things that they had made and created, we had people in our caravan start taking pictures. Oh, my God, what they do that for? One flick. You know, they was all on us. Snatched out the car. Snatched the hand out the window of the van. We're trying to pull her out. You hear what I'm saying? Person that we had with us, he had to jump out. Stand down, stand down. He was a military person, so he tried to, you know, use his authority. It did help us. It saved our life. Amen. He like, stand down, stand down. Because the police was there as well with their AK-47. They all in the midst of it. So much corruption. You see what I'm saying? They right there in the midst of it. But God give you wisdom, man. i never forget that. I was sitting, man. I tell you what, y'all got a pastor, man, that, hey, he lived this word out, man. Through all of that stuff going on, I was sitting on the front of the van just like this. And all that stuff was happening all around me. I was praying and believing God. God, you know, you're going to get us up out of here. But I was just looking. And so in all that ruckus, everybody looking and noise going all around, things happening, you know, stand down, you know. I was just looking. I saw this one little old dude. Hey, he come come from around the back of the van trying to come around to the door to open the door to get us up out of there. And if I hadn't have been standing on my watch and seeing what's going to happen. Yeah, I saw you sneaking around there. Bam! I hit that lock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look up at me, brother. <laughs> I tell you, I'm being a little comical, but we almost lost our lives. You hear about people going on those crusades and things, and you never see them again. If he had got in that door, y'all wouldn't have never seen us again. They had machetes and the police corrupt too. So they wouldn't, they wouldn't tell nothing. We was coming from Lagos, going to Benin City. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So God has a plan for you. Just, just stay with God, amen. I'm, I'm about ready to wind this up, but I, I want y'all to know, amen, God's plan has not changed for us. He said, but we have. The way we see God and what he really has done in our life, man, we got to trust God. We got to know things can work out in our homes, man, in our relationships. You know, sometimes we get married to a stranger. You got to work it out. You got to be willing to learn about one another. You got to be able to learn about one another. You got to be willing to learn about one another. You got to be willing to learn about one another. But it all comes with love. It comes with love. That's why I say love. L-O-V-E. God is the foundation of love. He is love. He said, let our value. What you value about your mate, show them you value it. If you can't show them you value it, you don't love. It's just that simple. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Didn't we evolve out of love? God saw, I saw something that was wonderful. And I'm going to create them. And they are fearfully and wonderfully made. And you know what? Since I created them, since I connected with them, I ain't going to leave them neither. 
See, well, a lot of times we're always trying to lead because things are happening in a relationship. You see, God give you wisdom. And I want you to hear this. Because, see, we have to be careful with that love thing. See, you can get too attached with love that you can get abused. And so I don't care what kind of love you in, God ain't said you need to be abused. See, when you walk in love, you can walk in wisdom, the wisdom of love. And if there's abuse, you need to get up out of that. You need to go. Oh, I love them. Okay, go on, love them from a distance. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. I know a lot of sad stories. And all it could have taken for them to hear what God was saying. See, God is always saying things to us. It's not always talking about separation and breaking up, but go get a solution. Some of us be so proudful, caught up in ourselves. We don't want to have no solution. You know, I'm a pastor, right? So we do a lot of counseling. A lot of people don't want the pastor to know their business. I don't want nobody to know my business. What are you talking about know your business? If you ain't doing nothing, you ain't got to worry about nobody knowing your business. <laughs> so you're going to stay messed up because you don't want nobody to know your business. Or do you want to get it right because you love the person that you really don't understand? But you can get to know them, and once you get to know a person, you can understand them. Personality and temperaments, we taught that a long time. I think, Pastor Mark, we need to go back to it to teach the church about personality and temperaments. You have to understand people's personality. And when you understand their personality, you can learn how to accept them. So now you are not going to push the wrong button. Not saying that, you know, he always getting mad because of it. Well, stop doing it then. Don't let him get mad. Do something else. <laughs> well, he always happy when he do that. Well, do that then. Don't do the one that when he get mad. Now, you know that what makes me mad. Why you going to do it? <laughs> Why? Why? Does that make sense? Y'all got to stop doing it to yourself. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Let them work. That Jesus will work it out if you let it. God said, cast your cares upon me for I care for you. So that little thing that you don't like about somebody, you give it to God. Let God work it out. Go talk to him about the good stuff, man. Pep him up. See, if you pep me up, man, I, maybe I'll be a good little boy. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you make me feel good. I may stick my chest out. Oh, you. I be the man. <laughs> you little old bird chest I got. What's going Y'all hear what I'm <laughs> Do y'all know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, God told me, he said, y'all, Pastor, you got to get real with these people. They done got tired of all them scriptures, man, and all that stuff about what the scripture said, what the word said, and ain't nobody doing none of the word. <laughs> and what are you going to do? Just keep coming here and all that? No, I'm going to deal with you with life, your everyday deal, what you go through all the time. That's what God said, I need you to talk about, Pastor. He said, you've been around a long time. You're turning 70 in a few days. He said, you done been... You done been up, you been down, you done been through some things, you almost been dead, people that had guns at you, got ready to blow your head off, you done seen the angels come and knock them out the way where you can escape, man, amen. You know, I was in the wrong place at the wrong, you be in the wrong place at the wrong time, you can get yourself messed up. So they were back in the day, now I'm letting y'all know now, it ain't happening now, they were back in the day. Look at that, make it plain. See, see, now they listen. So don't you know people be listening for something that's negative, right? <laughs> Boy, I tell you, I was in the wrong place at the wrong time. And it was all on the uh, news, man, national news and all kind of stuff. This person was all, they was hunting him and everything. And I wound up being in the place where he was at, man. I'm like, oh, my God. And he was out of his head. He was freaking out. If he saw a white pebble on the ground, he thought it was some cocaine or something. <laughs> he walking around on the ground. You see that little white pebble that he picking that up? <laughs> oh, Lord. 
I was in the wrong place at the wrong time. He was so full of, they'd be looking for him for about three, four days. He had robbed a bank. Had dollars, man. Had plenty of money. But he was smoking it all up. So he'd been smoking ever since he'd been gone. So he was out of his mind. And so he looked at a pebble and he looked at me. He said, what you doing? And had that uh, fortified right in front of my face, man. And there was a female in there, and she ran, and she says, boy, what you doing? And pushed his arm. That's all I needed. <laughs> I hit the door. <laughs> I hit the door, and I was gone. But what was so funny, and I'm going to close over this. <laughs> it was somebody that was in there with me. He ran to the door, but he was so scared. He, wouldn't even, he didn't even know how to open the door. So he over there at the door, and he doing this, trying to figure out how to open the door. And when I got there, I pushed him up. Man, get out the way. Man, I went out <laughs> And all I heard, pow, pew, pew, pew. Yeah, that's all I did. I heard. <laughs> What you do now, you see me now in the raw. Mel and Marge in the raw. A refreshing, activated word. Amen. Come on, give God a hand. Praise. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. What you see is what you get. Amen. But you know God loves y'all. I want y'all to know that God loves us. He wants us to really understand that he has a plan for us. And we got to stick with the plan and be willing to wait on the plan. And know that if God put you with somebody, amen, that was the reason why he did that. And he know that you can work it out. You can make it real beautiful if you're willing. He said if you're willing what? And obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. So you got to be willing to wait on God, amen. Glory to God. Are we ready to give and go home, amen? We didn't stay long.